Um, my name is uh, Nicholas Polymanakos, uh, citizen of Seattle. Um, lived here since uh, 1983. Uh, met some of you before. Um, my family are small business owners in Seattle. I'm speaking on behalf of myself uh, in support of this resolution um, as uh, also someone involved in family business, small business, and, and what the process is of, of dealing with money, getting loans. Um, and I know that uh, my involvement with my family in that business over the years, uh, a lot of, uh, of the opportunity given to us through local community banks. So I've seen the effect personally. Uh, as for the City of Seattle funds uh, and the possible divestment of them, I think it would be a great step. Uh, not only to, uh, as an example for other cities in the United States, but um, just as a, uh, a move and um, towards uh, integration or reintegration with citizens and government, um, just uh, uh, something else that shows that we uh, are together as citizens and government, and uh, that we are at the forefront of, uh, of a movement. Whether it's Occupy Seattle, or you're in agreement with that or not, but just on a basic level of, of uh, keeping money in Seattle, uh, uh, and I know money is a big deal here with, with deficits and all, and I think it's time that we keep that money here. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. <clears throat> my name is Ian Finkenbinder. I apologize for my voice. I was uh, down in Portland demonstrating with them in solidarity uh, in order to keep their space. And uh, I'll keep my comments brief. Um, I don't need to talk about many of the issues because many of the issues have already been spoken about. Um, some of the ones that are important to me, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a war vet who also, uh, uh, I'm HIV positive and my health care is paid for by the state. These are funds that are jeopardized by tax cuts and budget cuts. But really what I wanted to talk about is um, who we are because we're everyone. Uh, we have everyone. We're veterans. We're civilians. We're... Um, we're gay, we're straight, we're people of color, we're, uh, we're white people, we're, we're everyone. This is the largest populist movement in the history of the United States of America. And I really want to urge you guys to stand on the side of these fantastic people that are before you. I mean, look at us, we're filling up the council chamber. I'm sure you're really tired of hearing us talk. But um, do the right thing. Stand with us. It's, um, you'll be standing with the 99% and, and it's we're, we're powerful people to stand next to. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Doug Reed. And uh, I, you don't look like you're getting tired of hearing from us. <laughs> and I appreciate that very much. Um, I grew up in the Seattle area as well. Uh, Depression era parents. A father who was a Marine during the Second World War. An immigrant mother. Um, they're both past many, many years. And they would, uh, as Seattleites, they would, uh, they would be right up front, right here, right now. I'm, I'm confident of that. And they would be uh, very proud of the, the city council right at this moment, and of all of you, by the way. Uh, I'm, uh, I've been coming to the Occupy Seattle thing intermittently. I, I was living out in Seattle for a while, and I returned in the spring to go back to school. I'm in my mid-50s, and it's a big commitment. And this experience right here, right now, today, in this room, is as much of a classroom as I've been in in these last three months while I've been in school. So I, uh, I recognize it as a gift and an opportunity to learn more. Uh, I wanted to just address two things uh, that have become evident to me, and, and I've had the opportunity in the last uh, four days to have some dialogue with a few of the people here and others up at Occupy Seattle. Um, one of those areas has to do with uh, drug and alcohol use at the Occupy site, and the other with uh, uh, nonviolent uh, actions. And I have a little bit of experience in both those areas. I'm an uh, addict, alcoholic, return, uh, 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 
in sobriety for 23 years, and I, some of what I'm studying at Antioch University has to do with uh, nonviolent resolution. And uh, some of the dialogue I've had in the last few days is, has been very proactive and in both those areas. And um, so to the extent that the city council is concerned about those areas and the reaction that I've heard a little bit about here today from law enforcement, um, uh, just know this, that I'm, I'm committed to those specific two areas, and I know a lot of the folk here today are as well, and that, uh, uh, that those two things are, going forward, will be uh, addressed in creative, direct, <coughs> forthright ways. And, um, I, I've talked to a lot of committed people over the weekend. Thank you so much. Hi, my name is Robert Watts. I'm a soldier of the U.S. Army. I've been with the movement since October 1st, and I've supported it in many ways, as in the tactical working group and now medical. Um, when we had problems at the Sheraton and we were protesting, we, we were trying our best to just stand in solidarity as just complete as one group. And I was holding a bottle of Maalox in a little way, and I noticed how our officers of the Seattle Police Department were getting agitated. And there are certain, having a role as an officer or even a soldier, you're supposed to have a certain posture and a certain standard of control over yourselves. And I've noticed that there are some officers that are ready for anything, and then there's those officers that can control some, excuse me, have a cold, <laughs> um, can control themselves, and then there are those officers that will find any reason and means to use force just because they're upset that they're working overtime or not receiving those overtime payments. And I understand that they're 99%, but there needs to be a checks and balances for officers and ourselves. As a city, I can believe that we can control ourselves no matter what, and this is what this movement's about, checks and balances. And I thank you for listening. Thank you. Hi, my name is Todd Culbertson. I'm working class Schmo from Ballard. <laughs> uh, last week, I believe it was uh, last Wednesday, I was down in the university district. And I was there proceeding a, a march that was intended to protest in the opening of Chase Bank organized by uh, uh, UAW. I went down there and I witnessed a gross, uh, excessive amount of police officers occupying the U District. There were at least 50, 75, uh, two on every street corner, cavalry, uh, meter maids, bicycle cops. Uh, we hear so much in the media these days about how much money is being spent to, because of Occupy and because of the whole movement nationwide, when we there's this gross, you know, uh, it's it's totally unnecessary. When there's a peaceful protest plan, they simply look like they're providing security for the banks, and this is the impression. <laughs> I'm sure this is not the impression that the city of Seattle would like to, to propagate, but unfortunately it's the one that's coming off, and I know that the police should be there to mediate, not to intimidate, not to try to scare people who are not against the police department. I don't think anyone in Occupy, there's very few of them are against the police department. They're against the system that is put in place right now that has the few calling shots. And unfortunately, it just looks like at this point, the police are there to protect the few, not to work for the people and work for us. 
Thanks for your time.